Well, greetings, everyone. Well, there's some sort of trailer here um, that came out a couple days ago. I just now saw that it was here. Star Wars The High Republic. I have no idea what's going on here. Um, okay, so we're just going to watch it and uh, see what happens here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Hundreds of years before the Skywalker Saga, Galactic Republic is at its height. Protected by the Jedi Knights, the Guardians of Peace and Justice throughout the galaxy. These look like Phantom Menace shots. Okay, these are just movies. But a frightening new adversary threatens. Star Wars The High Republic. It's interesting. So it sounds like it's okay. So it's going to be over a bunch of different media, um, comics, novels, probably maybe video games. Um, kind of similar to how Shadows of the Empire was. That was like a multi-platform uh, because there was a game. There was 
um, the book. There was, I think, the, I think there was a radio drama, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay, so that's interesting. So there's this this era, uh, a couple uh, hundred years before. Let me see what the description reads here. Um, oh, okay. Set 200 years prior to the events of the Phantom Menace, the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order are at their height, serving and protecting the galaxy, featuring brand new stories from five authors set in an all-new era. This is Star Wars, The High Republic. <clears throat> okay, well, that's, that's interesting. Um, okay, yeah, so they're looking for new, uh, new stories to tell. Um, this would be an era of Jedi that we, I mean, obviously hasn't been explored on film, um, there's, I mean, there's been legends of Jedi, like Tales of the Jedi and stuff like that, but I think those were set more thousands of years before, um, before A New Hope. So that's kind of like ancient, ancient Star Wars era. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Jedi act, uh, differently if they say it's kind of a Wild West sort of idea, kind of a ranger, um, a ranger sort of idea. Because at the start of the Clone Wars, I think there were, what, 10,000 Jedi um, spread throughout the galaxy, which, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but, I mean, really, 10,000 people could, uh, you know, easily fill a stadium, you know. Uh, it's really not a lot when you consider the expanse of the galaxy, how, how many uh, worlds that there are, how many... Uh, how many creatures there are, species, just how many worlds and towns and villages, all of that. So the Jedi at that time were really pretty small, so I'm wondering if um, <clears throat> if the Jedi is that size or if it's uh, smaller. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole lot of, whole lot of interesting uh, stuff here. I'm just kind of... Let's see... Let's just kind of fast forward to around here. So that's one thing that I'm that is different from modern Star Wars from what is original Star Wars is original Star Wars comes from basically one guy, one guy, George Lucas. Um, and he was telling archetypes, you know, he was, he was telling, coming of age story, um, classic fairy tale elements. So that's, that's part of what made Star Wars so accessible is because it was very primordial at that time. And, you know, then he goes to the prequels and he explains how things come. So again, he's still telling archetype things like the Faustian Pact, uh, the rise and fall of empires of uh, empires, governments, what have you, uh, the things that contribute to that. Um, and so there are still archetypical things, but there were some branching out as to, you know, different kinds of stories, you know, mini stories. As Star Wars became into television, then it didn't have to be the huge overarching epic story, but there were lots of the small stories uh, that we got in the Clone Wars um, and in Rebels as well. And in Rebels... There was a huge nostalgia factor because you're, they were borrowing from, or they were using the illustrator, um, McCory, Ralph McCory illustrations to really craft the look of the show. And of course, everything has to feed into um, A New Hope um, and, you know, Rogue One and stuff like that. Um, so, again, Star Wars television, you have that sort of aspect. So... This, I mean, there may be movies coming out of this. I, there might be TV show. Um, there's going to be books, it looks like, probably comics, um, because they say that there's going to be all these sort of interconnected stories. I know that is one thing, uh, again, about modern uh, Star Wars, even as far as getting into the Legends era, you know, back in the, in the 90s, uh, when the books came out and there were video games and then comic books were coming out, and there was all this different Star Wars stuff. But all of that was really its own separate thing rather than reinforcing... Rather than building towards a mainstream story, it was all just kind of background stuff that just sort of reinforced the universe of the original uh, the original trilogy. So again, 
you you can enjoy the original trilogy without having seen all of that extra stuff. It was pretty much just extra stuff. But now the Lucasfilm Story Group has really been interconnecting all these different media so that way they reinforce each other and they add to each other. And I know that some people might be bothered by that by saying, well, am I going to miss out by seeing, by not having this thing? And I, I don't imagine so because I, I enjoyed watching the prequel trilogy and I never, I've never read any of the novels like the, the journey to force awakens journey to the last Jedi journey to rise of Skywalker. Those, those books, I haven't read any of them. Um, and so I really don't think that I'm missing out. Now, having reading those will help me to appreciate those stories more, but I don't think it, it uh, detracts from the overall accessibility of it. So, um, that, but again, some people have, have um, thought that maybe it's like you have to go out and get all this sort of stuff and that they're kind of trying to get more money from you by saying you're not going to understand this unless you get this you know almost like um almost like a free to play but pay to win games you know you're really not going to do well unless you actually buy from us but <clears throat> well anyway so let's just keep going a little bit <clears throat> Let me see if I can find a shot of that board. Wait, okay, so let's see. Um, looking at this. Ah! Oh, shoot. Hang on, sorry. I clicked. Stop. Okay. Uh, let's see. Fiction, authenticity, lived in, surprise, diversity, uh, actual ending, feelings, relatable characters, sweeping, epic, humor. Okay, that's fine. I know some people are going to get upset about the whole diversity thing. I, to me, I I don't make it political. I mean, I know that there there are there are political undertones in certain things, like specifically in Clone Wars and such like that. But I mean, that's just in a general governmental sort of thing. I'm not talking about relation to real life hot button topic issues. I don't take Star Wars in in that aspect necessarily. Um, I mean, the galaxy is big. There are you know, millions of different kinds of species. So to me, I don't care. Okay. I don't care. And I don't think it's anything to really worry about. Um, let's see. Star Wars, not pro war. Okay. So, um, that's kind of political there. Uh, droids, scope, mythic, space, and mythic. That'll be interesting. Uh, no single main character as in Mandalorian which is a very different sort of way. Uh, the Force, Complicated Monsters, okay. Star Wars Wishes, High Republic, Relic Hunters, interesting. University, Dinosaurs. Hmm. Representation, Diversity, okay, that's still kind of a thing. Arthurian Legends, okay, now that's going to be fun. Now you're getting back into archetype stuff, okay, that'll be, that'll be fun. Rival Houses, Sith Empire, Chaos Agents, Splinter Group Force Users, Oh, there's some interesting stuff in there. That'll be very, very, very interesting. Um, I like how it's oh, some of the lightsabers have a little cross guard, uh, not like Kylo Ren where it's like a bladed cross guard, but it's just a it just looks like a sword. I mean that's cool. That's that's an interesting design ec ethic, um, and the the costumes look a little bit more. I mean yeah, Arthurian, not uh, not like the modern uh, Jedi robes that you find in the era of the Clone Wars. Um, but uh, just something that's a little bit more antique looking, you know, something that looks, uh, yeah, looks from that Arthurian time.
Okay, so that'll be inter <laughs> interesting how you see Pablo, and then there's Pablo. He's a character right there next to that droid. That'll be interesting. Okay, so th so that's interesting that it's that it's not a threat within the Republic, as in um, the uh, prequel era, where it's the Sith who have infiltrated the galactic um, the Senate, the government, and risen to power, <coughs> and set this chess game against uh, of the of the Jedi against the Sith, but really the Sith is controlling both sides. So it's not like that, it sounds like. Um, so that'll be an interesting dynamic. And then, of course, the original trilogy is Civil War uh, within the Empire, um, which just kind of overflows into the time of the First Order when Palpatine, you know, he, he's got the... He's got the First Order, he brings up these people in from the Unknown Regions, and he basically tries again uh, to establish control of the, of the, M of, um, control of the galaxy through proxy, if you will. Um, just kind of continuously haunting that Skywalker line. So again, it's still with that sort of intergalactic, that inter, intra, whatever. It's inside the galaxy, it's inside the Republic, is what it is, inside the Republic, inside the Empire. But this will be interesting if it's going into outside places where we haven't dealt with, and there are uh, outside Republic forces that come and make contact. Um, there can be some interesting stories to tell there. me of nihilus uh, this kind of oblivion sort of idea that is pretty sinister that is very very sinister you can't take it with you but we can take it from you oh, wow that um, that opens up the door to a whole different realm of of evil really um, Wow, that'll, that'll be interesting. Our story starts with what we're calling the Great Disaster. It wouldn't be Star Wars without adventure. And there's definitely a series of events that will spin the galaxy into a dangerous new direction, and it'll give the opportunity for heroes to rise up. The cool thing about this is that there's going to be a story for every Star Wars fan. Hmm. What scares the Jedi? Hmm. Test of courage, light Jedi into the dark. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like they're starting off with books here. These are what these are, books and comics. Okay, so there may not even be TV shows or movies. I don't know. It looks like that might be what it is. I mean, it might be interesting if, if uh, some Star Wars movies come out of this because there's, you know, these unnamed uh, projects. But, okay, seeing this here at the end, it looks like it's going to be uh, text-based um, novels and graphic novels and comics, things like that. So, okay, well, that should be interesting. That should be interesting. It sounds like fun. Um, if it is going to be just comics and books and stuff like that, then chances are I'm probably not really going to be able to get into it much. Um, so, but that's okay. That's alright. I'm sure that someone will enjoy it. Okay, well, I guess those are my thoughts on that. So, uh, let me know in the comments what you think, and if you enjoy uh, this type of comment, um, you know, leave a like and subscribe, all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, just 
May the force be with you.